hello and welcome back to this channel once again in today's lesson we are going to learn how to find the energy that is stored in a capacitor under dc conditions now in this lesson we are going to consider two examples let's take the first example so find the energy that is stored in each capacitor below under dc conditions now here we have a circuit which is made up of six milliampere carrying source and then we have resistors and then capacitors connected in the circuit. Now we are asked to find the energy that is stored in each capacitor below under DC conditions. Now, the first thing that comes to mind is we need to take notice of the number of capacitors that we have in the circuit. So first of all, we need to understand that we have two capacitors in the circuit. We have this to be the two millifarads capacitor and then this to be 4 millifarads capacitor. Therefore, we have two capacitors in the circuit. So let's say C1. C1 is equal to 2 millifarads. And then C2, that is equal to 4 millifarads. Now, one very important thing we need to take notice of is the fact that under DC conditions, the capacitor behaves as an open circuit. Under DC conditions, a capacitor behaves as an open circuit. So this is basically going to help us in order to find the energy that is stored in the capacitor. Now, first of all, we need to find the voltage across each capacitor and that helps us to find the energy stored in the capacitor. So what we are going to do next is we are going to redraw the circuit and we are going to replace each capacitor with an open circuit. So let's redraw the circuits, eliminating the various capacitors and then replacing them with an open circuit. So basically this is how the circuit is going to be like after replacing each of the capacitors with an open circuit and then also it means that we have this to be v1 and then this to be v2 now the interest is first of all to find the voltage across each of the capacitors now to find the voltage v1 and then v2 we first of all need to do current distribution so considering the six milliampere current source which is moving in this direction approaching this node what really happens here is that when this current approaches the node we have the current going to split now we are going to have current moving in this direction and also in this direction now there wouldn't be any current in this direction moving in this direction simply because this is an open circuit so the current will either move in this direction or in that direction now one interesting thing is that the current that moves in this branch that is through the two kilo ohms resistor approaching this node will be the same current that moves through the four kilo ohms resistor simply because there is an open circuit here so the current will not flow in the open circuit but rather move in this direction so what this primarily means is that the current that flows through the two kilo ohms resistor is the same current that flows through the four kilo ohms resistor and therefore these two resistors are connected in series therefore we are going to say that rt prime is equal to 2 plus 4 and that's basically 6 kilo ohms so the combination 2 and then 4 is equal to 6 kilo ohms now looking at the position of v1 and then v2 the value of v1 taking the anticlockwise direction is simply the current flowing through this branch times the value of this resistor and then also taking this direction for v2 that is simply the current flowing in this branch times the value of this resistor so let's try to find v1 and then v2 now it means here that we are basically interested in the current taking this direction so first of all using the current division rule considering the current division rule if we want to find the current taking this path then we say that that is 
I 6 kilo ohms. I 6 kilo ohms in the sense that we have the combination to be 6 kilo ohms. So I 6 kilo ohms is equal to the value of this resistor because we basically want to distribute current between these two resistors 3 kilo ohms and the combination which is 6 kilo ohms. So basically, we are going to have this to be equal to the value of the other resistor which is 3 divided by the sum of the two resistors so 3 plus 6 times the value of current approaching the junction which is 6 milliamperes now in that regard we are going to have 3 divided by 9 times 6 milliamperes and that is basically 2 milliamperes so what this primarily means is that the current that is taking this path passing through the 2 kilo ohms as well as the 4 kilo ohms resistors is 2 milliamperes now in respect to that we can simply find the voltage so let's say we are going to have v1 voltage across the first capacitor to be 2 milliamperes times 2 kilo ohms and that is equal to 2 times 2 is 4 so we are going to have 4 volts notice that this is in milliamperes and this is in kilos so they compensate each other so we simply multiply the values and then we have 4 volts similarly for v2 that is simply 2 milliamperes times 4 kilo ohms and then we have 2 times 4 to be 8 so that is 8 volts so the voltage across c1 is 4 volts voltage across c2 is 8 volts now let's try to find the energy that is stored in each capacitor so the energy stored in each capacitor the energy stored in the capacitor is given by w equals half c v square half c v square so to find the energy stored in c1 that is simply half times the value of the capacitance that is 2 millifarads so 2 times 10 to the power negative 3 and then times v square so 4 square now when you evaluate this you are going to have 0 0.016 joules 0 0.016 joules now we can simply we can simply put this in millijoules that is we want to move the decimal point three times to the right so we go like this one two three and that is basically 16 millijoules so basically this is the energy that is stored in the first capacitor now for energy stored in the second capacitor that is also half times c this time we have four millifarads times eight volts so eight square and that is also going to give us 0 0.128 joules we convert this to millijoules we move one two three so we have 128 millijoules so basically these are the energies that are stored in C1 and then C2 respectively, 16 millijoules as well as 128 millijoules. So basically this is how to find the energy that is stored in a capacitor under DC conditions. Now let's move ahead as we take the second example. So for the second example, as usual, we are going to find the energy that is stored in each of the capacitors below. So first of all, as we did in the previous example, we need to take notice of the number of capacitors in the circuit. Here we have two capacitors, 30 microfarads and then 20 microfarads. So let's say C1 is equal to 30 microfarads and then we have C2 to be 20 microfarads. So we have a 10 volt source. And then we have these two capacitors and then resistors connected in this circuit. Now, under DC conditions, capacitors behave as an open circuit. So we are going to redraw this circuit, eliminating the capacitors and then introducing the open circuits.
So after redrawing the circuit, this is what we are going to have. Now first of all, we are going to find V1 and then V2. So we are going to do current distribution. Now we have a 10 volt source, which is going to drive current through the circuit. Now the current produced by this voltage source is going to move in this direction that is in this branch. So let's call that I. It's going to flow or move in this branch towards this node. Now at this node, we have current moving only in this branch, in this direction, simply because this is an open circuit. There will be no current in this direction. This is also an open circuit. There will not be any current in this direction. So all the current that approaches this junction will also flow in this branch, in this direction, and then back to the source. Therefore, we say that these three resistors, one, three, and then six kilo ohms are in series. Therefore, we are going to have the total resistance Let's say RT to be equal to 1 plus 3 plus 6, and that is equal to 10 kilo ohms. So, to find the current I that is being produced by the 10 volt source, that is simply equal to from Ohm's law, we have V divided by R, in this case RT, this is equal to we have 10 volts divided by. 10 kilo ohms and therefore we have current i to be 1 milli amperes so this is the value of the current produced by the voltage source now to find the value of v1 we are going to take v1 moving in the clockwise direction and this is basically in line with the direction of i therefore we can say that we have v1 to be equal to the value of the current flowing in this resistor times the value of this resistor that is simply 1 milliamps times 3 kilo ohms so 1 times 3 that is 3 so we have 3 volts kilo and then milli compensates each other now to find the value of v2 we are going to consider this loop and then we take the clockwise direction so according to kvl we know that the sum of the source voltages should be equal to the voltages dropped across the loop so we have 10 volts in the clockwise direction we have v2 in the anti-clockwise direction therefore the sum of the voltages will be 10 minus v2 and that is equal to the sum of the voltages dropped across the loop so we have current I flowing through this resistor. So that becomes one milliamps times one kilo ohms. So we have 10 minus V2 and that's equal to one times one is one. Now we transpose 10 to the right hand side. So we are going to have negative V2 equals one minus 10 and that's going to be negative v2 equals negative 9 so we divide through by negative 1 by negative 1 and then we have v2 to be equal to 9 volts so we have v1 to be 3 volts we have v2 9 volts now let's move ahead to find the energies that are being stored in the two capacitors so for c1 First of all, we put down the formula that is half times C times V squared. So for W1, that is equal to, we have half times C. So 30 micro, 30 micro. So that is times 10 to the power negative six. And then times V squared. So times three squared. And this is going to give us 135 microjoules and then we have W2 that is also equal to half times 20 times 10 to the power negative 6 times 9 square and that is also basically going to give us 810 microjoules. 
so w1 is 135 microjoules w2 810 microjoules